Hey guys, here are my predictions for AQA 2019 Physics Paper 1. Now the first thing you have to remember is that I'm not an examiner. I do not know what is going to be on the exams. I do not have any insider information. So these are just guesses. But I did do a lot of reading. I did do a lot of thinking. And this is what I think is going to come up. However, it is just a think. So please revise absolutely everything in the specification in your revision guides. Don't forget to help you with that, I've made the whole topic videos, I've given you a free revision guide which you can download from my website and to go with this video I've written you a predictive paper so you can practice all of the questions. So we know a lot of what is going to be on the paper because the examiners have told us. We know there is going to be 15% based on practicals. Now last year the practical question was a lovely easy practical question on density. I really don't think it's going to be that lovely or that easy this year. I think it's going to be much more skill based. I think it's really really going to try and put novel concepts in there and take you out of your comfort zone. Now last year they did one practical, so the practicals that we have left over are the electricity practicals, so the resistance and the IV characteristics, and then specific heat capacity. For separate science there is also the thermal insulation one, which is very very closely linked to specific heat capacity. So what they might do is do one extended question about two of the practicals. Because of separate science you could link the thermal insulation to the specific heat capacity practical, which everyone has to do. Or you could link both of the electricity practicals together, the resistance and the IV characteristics. So there could be quite a lot of interlinking between the practicals, so it is really, really important that you know your practicals really, really well. I've done new videos going over these and I've written you loads and loads of questions to help you practice them. But we need to be thinking about the skills, we need to be thinking about how you take what you've done in the practical and apply it to a new situation. Something that maybe you haven't seen before. We saw that come up a lot in last year's papers, so it's definitely something we can expect to happen in this year's papers. We know that 30% of the physics marks is going to come from math skills. Now, every single year, somewhere in the GCSE, they include standard form, they include a rounding error, so on your calculator when you see the little recurring dot, that's a maths thing. We don't do that in science. You need to press that little SD button and turn it into an actual number. So standard form, rounding errors, and then something about decimal places or significant figures. This pops up every single year. Now it doesn't always pop up in the physics paper, it could be in the biology papers, it could be in the chemistry papers, but considering that 30% of the physics marks is going to come from math, this is a likely place for something like that to pop up. So make sure your maths in physics skills are really good. And I'm talking about things like rearranging equations, which actually take a step backwards. Before we can rearrange those equations, we have to learn the equations. Because that formula sheet that you get given now is much, much shorter than it used to be. So we have to be able to learn the equations and then apply them in new and unfamiliar circumstances. You also have to learn those units. I remember a few years ago, the last question on one of the papers was simply, what are the units for specific heat capacity? And well, that's one of the trickier ones and it threw a lot of people. But units are easy, easy marks for you to pick up. So please make sure, made you flashcard videos going over them, make sure you go and watch those videos, learn all of your equations and learn all of your units. One of the things that came out from last year were that graphs in physics weren't done very well. And if something isn't done very well last year, the examiners kind of like to throw it in again this year. So, we can expect to see some graphs on the paper. Now this could come into your math skills, this could come into the practical skills, or it could just be a separate question on graph interpretation. Remember, you've got to have it scaled relevantly, so if they give you a really, really big bit of paper, don't draw a teeny tiny little graph down in the corner, because nobody can mark that. When you're doing your points, make sure they are crosses, not dots, because dots nobody can see. Make sure it goes all the way along, it's a linear scale, make sure you've got your line the best fit in there. Now the examiners can't put every single topic into every single paper, but there were a few topics that well, weren't in last year's paper, so those are things I would 
definitely suggest that you revise for this year's paper. I'm talking about stuff like energy production, especially renewable energy production. That is a really, really big thing at the moment with the massive effect that climate change is having on this planet. There are lots and lots of questions they could ask about this, and this will make you a really, really good six marker. There is a whole separate unit on the arrangement of particles, but one of the things they didn't ask you last year was the arrangement of solids, liquids, and gases. So that would definitely be something that I would put a high up on my list to revise for this year. This could again be a really, really nice six marker or anything from that unit would make a great short question. So the interactions between the two, we can relate things to pressure, we can relate things to density in this. This is a lovely, lovely unit that you can revise. And one of the great things about this is, is that it links over into chemistry as well. So revising this would be kind of like revising for your physics and for your chemistry exam at the same time. Another thing that comes up a lot in both chemistry and in physics is a radioactivity. Now they asked quite a few questions on this last year but one of the things they didn't ask and again this is a lovely lovely six marker is about Rutherford and his experiment and the development of the structure of the atom and how scientific models change over time. Lots and lots of things about radioactivity they missed out. So this would be a great section for you to focus your revision on. So for combined science, things we need to focus on are the particles and their arrangement. Lots of lovely, lovely questions about radioactivity. We can think about energy, production of energy, how that's transferred around in the context of six mark questions. We can think about energy in the context of our practicals and we can also relate that through to um, density in the arrangement of particles. For electricity, there's lots and lots of maths that they could ask you. There is a massive, massive chunk of equations needed for this. And then there's lots and lots of stuff about the two electricity practicals they could ask you. So, don't forget guys, that is for combined science. For separate science, there isn't actually a load more extra stuff they can ask you. So you have 30 extra marks of stuff to do and topics that are extra in separate science for paper one are going to be things like static electricity, there's the extra practical for thermal insulation and then there's things like pressure. So it's not a big chunk so what they'll probably do is just expand a few of the other questions. Don't forget to go with this video, there are the predicted papers over my website, there's a practical questions workbook I've written for you, there are flashcards for the equations and units that I've written for you, there's a free revision guide which you can download from my website, there is so much stuff I've done to help you out guys, so good luck.